I am at Katsil. Mr. Bola Singh. I am Mr. Bola Singh. And I am here at Katsil. I am here with Mr. Salkram. Better known as Eds. And he is one of the camp man, or the camp manager at this camp here. And he actually sees about everything within the camp while the hunters actually go out in the forest. But today we are going to show how the basic light was before we got the electricity and before we had carbide and all these things. We had something known as the flambeau. So we're going to talk about flambeau a little bit and try to organize and put back a flambeau in motion so that people could see what used to be long ago before we had electricity or before we had uh, what we used to carry through the batteries and so on, before we had battery power and so on. So we had flambeau. So here's is going to actually make a flambeau. And we're going to go through this flambeau in sort of a stages. In the flambeau, what he has in his hand is kerosene. That's a flammable liquid. And he's pouring it into the into a, a bottle. The bottle is where he's going to hold it in place. Hold the liquid so that the liquid is not actually lost. And um, then he's going to place a week in, in there. Alright? So he's going to he's going to make three flambos. Right? Then he's pouring the kerosene in there. Now kerosene is a flammable liquid. It means that it will light on ignition. If you put a light into it, it's going to light. And that's what gives the flame. People try this with diesel. You could put diesel in there. Diesel will also give you a flame because it's also a flammable liquid. But gas is not recommended because gas is more dangerous because it gives a, it operates diff different on, on when we put an ignition to gas it more or less will form an explosive type of thing. Now the, the question is here we have put this, this diesel in there and now he's going to put a week. Now he's going to put a, a week. Now this is, the cloth here is a type of cotton, right? It's a good conductor of heat and as a result it, um, it, it transfers, it, it, it's going to be moving the, and um, carrying the liquid up or transporting the liquid, transporting the liquid from down here. To where the mission point is. Now he's cutting the the, the cord, the the ignition, the cloth, so I guess, sorry. And then he's going to make a week with this. Now making a week is very important. People use different types of material based on the time and the operation of the flambeau. Some people even use paper as a conduit. Right? But we have different type of material that's going to be different type of um, going to be suitable in different ways. Now the cotton cloth is much more suitable than paper or any type of toilet paper. People use all types of things. Now he's going to roll it. That is what he's doing, rolling it. And then, but the idea behind it must be able to fit tightly over the cover. The science behind it is it must block out all the oxygen from getting into there. So it's not going to cause the the, the fire to go down into the bottle. So he's putting the cloth into it as you see. Because that's the way it's going to be very tight. It's going to lock off all the oxygen from going into the bottle. And this um, week 
is actually going deep into the bottle until it reaches the kerosene or the that is going to give that that is going to give the life to the fire. Um, now in there what is another thing that is going to happen <coughs> is the weak is going to transfer the kerosene to the top of the to the top of the um, the flambeau. And in that in the top of the flambeau where we will have the ignition. Now what we're seeing here as the wick and this here is where we have the, the light is going to be. This operates under osmotic pressure, osmosis, from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Here is where we will have a, a low concentration, and here in the liquid is going to be a high concentration. So there is always going to be a transference of, of the liquid. And when you light the fire here, it is going to pour the burning out of the, the thing. The mouth of this is going to prevent the oxygen from coming into the bottle. So as a result, it's going to stop the, the fire from getting into the bottle and burning. And the fire, if the flame is going to be there, it's going to be continuous because this flam this flambeau, this is only going this is always going to be moving the the material, which is the kerosene, to the top of it where it will be ignited in a short time. So technically long ago people used to be using this flambeau. Not only in the forest in houses and so on. But the problem in this is, is this is that like kerosene, when it burns, it don't give you a clean burning, it will burn. You get fire. Once you get fire, you get bright lights. Light light bright enough. And you are not going to you're going to get a lot of smoke, a lot of carbon. And the carbon have a tendency to blacken the area around. So people already use the light. We use this light anymore because now we have current, we have electricity, we have everything, everything like that. We have a more um, sort of a environment friendly type of um, liquid um, fluid, an environmental friendly type of metal in which you can get uh, your light. And people have a tendency to do that. But we must always remember that there may be a day in common where we might have to return to the question of the flambeau. And the flambeau is like, for example, deep in the forest as we are, we can use this flambeau for light. Right? So we are making three flambeau. As we say, we are going to put them to the test a little later when the place is dark. We're going to put them there to the test so that they will um, actually break up the area and we will see them actually in action at the later time. It is very also advisable that in choosing the fluid, the, the fluid, the fuel for here, for the flambeau, you try as much as possible while you're using a flammable liquid like diesel and kerosene. You actually look at your own safety by not using things like gas and so on. Because gas is formed wherever gas is, there is vapor. There is vapor in kerosene, but it is not as sufficient to make a ignition on the outside. Like gas, for example. If I have this flambeau with gas, this whole circle here, before I, I light it, before the fire comes into here, it might light all around here. And actually, I will be... But you don't look, you don't look at the flambeaux. The flambeaux earlier, we earlier made these flambeaux um, in the daylight. 
right? And now we're going to see how you flammable operating at night. So Mr. Salikram is here as a demonstration he's going to about lighting the flambos and then we're going to look at it in the darkness and see how, how it brings the light to the area. Now remember hunters, this was the first light they use. They use it not only for brightness, but they use it for hunting also. In the areas a long time they used to be using this for headlighting as well, but they used to headlight with a flambeau. And you also hold this light behind the head like this, and you'll find that the light used to reflect on the animals, and reflect on the eyes, and they used to shoot at the thing. So we are about to have heads lighting this lamp, and let's see how they look in a short while. So now we see in the flambeau, you notice that there is a long, straight um, light. Now the flambeau is all normally, we take the flambeau from here now, we look at the light that we are seeing around the flambeau, and we see a lot of light. This is the type of light that we are going to get. It's not the bright light that is offered with the electricity that you saw before, right, where you use battery power, or you use gasoline power, or you use something like that. You're going to, this light gives you a sort of a yellow light. And the yellow light is what you are seeing here. And this is the type of light that you are getting. Now before you notice that I talked about um, hunting with this light. Now if I hold this light in the back of my head like this, and I, an animal is in front of me, if the animal's eye is going to shine. And the animal, when it will shine, it is going to shine with the reflection of this light. Once this light is reflected in his eye, I am going to know that the animal is there. Now if you notice this light not piercing the environment, it is just a, sh a, a, a light that just lights up the whole area. So the animal also is not really, um, he does not really feel that he is in danger. Because he, he sees no, he is feeling that nobody is seeing him in this type of light that we are seeing there. Right? So he actually looks at the light and the reflection is what the hunter will see. And when he shoots, he will shoot at the eye. The eye don't necessarily be seeing him, but probably it might look at the light or probably not. But the eyes are going to reflect and that's the way the, the, the hunter used to hunt long time. We used to call that hunting, that type of hunting, flambote. Flambote was where hunters actually you um, was actually finding these animals by moving on the flambeau and walking through the forest. And actually, okay, as we saying, as we told you before, the lamp is is made with um, kerosene or pitch oil. It is made with diesel, but it is not made. Not I repeat, it is not made with gasoline, because gasoline is much more flammable. And you could have the vapors around the light, and the fire is going to come onto that, and it might even burn you. So these light, these lamps are not made with gasoline, but they are made with kerosene and um, diesel.